I want to talk with you about the use of carnivore eating in beating diabetes. I am not now, nor have I ever been on a fully carnivore diet, nor am I recommending a fully carnivore diet as a lifestyle. I have my own personal reasons for this, and I'll share them a little bit later, but I am fully sold on the use of carnivore days and carnivore meals as a tool in beating diabetes and maintaining near-normal blood sugar. Before we go any further, I need to give you a definition of carnivore, and that's not exactly easy because carnivore means different things to different people. A simple definition of carnivore is an animal or a person who eats meat exclusively. But it gets a little bit muddy. Most carnivores, at least the people variety, would include eggs, some would include cheese, some would include meat plus all dairy except for milk. Many people who say they eat carnivore will admit that in truth they eat occasional foods that come from plants, but not too many. Others might say this is a ketivore diet rather than carnivore. For my purposes, I'm going to include, as a carnivore diet, uh, all kinds of meat, any high-fat dairy, such as high-fat cheese, heavy whipping cream, high-fat unsweetened yogurt, and so forth. Now, many think of a carnivore meal as one consisting of zero carbohydrates, but that's often not the case. You could eat eggs and sausage, and you still might be getting a small amount of sugar that was put in the sausage. I'm not a perfectionist, so when I talk about carnivore days or carnivore meals, I'm not insisting on absolutely zero carbs. What I am emphasizing is that you eat meals which are so low in carbs, their effect on blood sugar is negligible. In other words, very, very few carbs. Now, for those of you who are vegetarian, instead of eating steaks and hamburger patties, you could eat eggs and cheese if your version of vegetarianism allows for that. Now, if you're vegan, you're going to have it a little tougher in place of carnivore days and carnivore meals. Well, you ought to try to eat foods that are as close as you can get to zero net carbs. Sometimes you may need to eat foods that actually have quite a few carbs, but nearly all those carbs are fiber, so you're eating very few net carbs. A bowl of chia seed pudding comes to mind with a couple of stalks of celery, as an example. Lupin flour has an enormous amount of fiber to it, so in terms of net carbs, it's an excellent choice. You could make lupin flour tortillas and fill them with very low-carb veggies. Follow one of life's basic rules for success. Do the best you can with whatever you have. Now, getting back to the idea of carnivore days and meals, let me answer the basic question of why. Why would we want to incorporate carnivore meals and days into our beet diabetes diet? It has to do with understanding our enemy, with grasping what it is that makes diabetics diabetic. You actually have three main foes to defeat, enemies that are destroying your body and your health. One, of course, is high blood sugar. Another one is excessive surges of insulin that go hand in hand with high blood sugar for most diabetics. You show me a type 2 diabetic with high glucose, and I will show you a diabetic who probably has runaway, over-the-top, excessive surges of insulin. And these two evil monsters, high glucose and high insulin, always hang out together. Where glucose goes, excessive insulin is sure to follow, vainly trying to hold back the dangers of runaway blood sugar. But those floods of insulin coursing through your body become legitimate dangers in their own right. You were made for little trickles of insulin to keep your glucose in line, not massive floods of insulin. And there is one more problem for diabetics. In addition to high glucose and excessive insulin, Most serious diabetics have the immense problem of just simply spending way too long every day in the death zone, that zone where the high glucose and the high insulin linger, not just for a few minutes or half an hour, as is more normal, but often they will experience this lingering high glucose and high insulin for hours. And then they eat another meal and bang, here they go again. Glucose spikes way too high, insulin follows hard on its heels, and they end up staying at these elevated levels for hours once more. 
And this vicious cycle just keeps on repeating itself day after day and meal after meal. And you are headed for big trouble. Now, let me show you a blood sugar chart for a serious diabetic. Someone who has uh, extreme high blood sugar. Uh, you're going to get some glucose spikes with every meal, serious glucose spikes. Everybody's going to rise a little bit. And then you're going to get smaller spikes for small snacks that you eat in between meals. So your whole day is filled with glucose spikes and <laughs> glucose mini spikes from your snacks all day long. And usually it's not going to be this pointed. It's going to be more rounded and it's going to last longer. Now, the more you can eliminate these spikes, the better off you're going to be. For example, let's say you stop snacking. You say, well, I'm still going to eat my three big meals, three high carb meals, but I'm going to stop snacking. So guess what? You eliminate these spikes. Boom. They're gone. Now you've just got three spikes to deal with. You've done yourself a tremendous favor. And let's say you eat low-carb meals instead of high-carb meals. Now, guess what? You're still going to have rises, but they're not going to go nearly so high. So now your glucose chart looks more like this. Far superior to what it did look like. But let's say you go a step Further, as we recommend on this challenge, you have bulletproof coffee either for breakfast or for dinner. So now the bulletproof coffee is not going to give you a spike or very little spike. So let's say you have it for breakfast. And now your glucose chart for the day looks like this which is vastly superior. You are going to be so much better. And you have done yourself, again, a tremendous favor. Yes, you still have a couple of glucose rises, but not nearly so severe, much more moderate. And uh, then, let's say, occasionally, you have a day where you go ahead and eat a relatively low-carb lunch, but it does have some carbs to it. So you get a rise. But then for supper, you have a carnivore supper, just maybe some uh, meat and eggs, and boom, almost no spike. So now you're down to this. Do you suppose when you have days like this, you may improve your situation? <laughs> My friend, you will improve your situation tremendously. So the more spikes the more uh, uh, glucose rises you can either cut off or cut down, the better off you'll be. And guess what? When you don't have all those spikes, your insulin levels are going to hang out at the lower end as well. So you may have insulin levels that look something like this, a glucose spike that looks like this. And that's what I, I actually recommend as much as you can do it, uh, is that you have a dinner that's a carnivore dinner. Have your veggies for lunch. Have your dinner carnivore, then you're going to go all this way. Have your bulletproof coffee here. It won't be till lunch of the next day before you get very much of a rise. So when you eat like that, you almost cannot help but improve significantly. And usually, I can't guarantee it, obviously, but usually it happens pretty fast. I mean, we're talking just a few months before you really, really see progress and we get the reports coming in all the time and people are so excited and they're saying, man, this is really working. I, I'm, I'm seeing my numbers way down. Yes, you are. Because you've cut down on the glucose spikes. You've cut down on the insulin surges. You're not spending much time in the death zone. In fact, once you get this thing under control, you won't spend any time there. And I consider the death zone about anything from 180 on. Really, anything over 140 is not good for you. But you're really getting in trouble once you approach 200 and 300 is worse, 400 is worse still. So you are doing yourself an incredible favor. You cannot hardly help but get a better A1C when you're doing that. During this four to six month challenge, I want you to go a step further than simply having some bulletproof coffee or having an occasional extra carnivore meal. I want you to designate one day out of your week as a carnivore day. Now, I suggest Mondays, but if another day works better for you, that's fine. 
What the Bulletproof Coffee is to your daily diet, the Carnivore Day is to your weekly diet. You're going to be taking one day of the week where you eat almost no carbs at all. It's not a total fast. It's not like you're not eating. But it will essentially be a carbohydrate fast. Theoretically, this means that for one day out of every seven, you will not see any significant glucose rise or insulin surge at all. You should coast through that day on a metabolic vacation. Now, if you have serious dawn effect going on, you may still see some pretty serious glucose rising, but at least that's due to a natural process of your body fixing itself, and it's not the result of you eating a lot of junk carbs and making yourself more diabetic than ever. The carnivore diet is picking up a lot of steam these days. When I first started Beat Diabetes in 2017, very few people were talking about this. Today, <laughs> very few people are not talking about it. This kind of diet drives our vegan friends crazy as it is precisely the opposite of what they preach and practice. And since they love to tell us that meat and fat are the cause of diabetes, it puzzles and even infuriates them to hear testimonies of people who have gone from diabetic glucose levels to non-diabetic levels on a carnivore diet. They love to tell us that meat and animal products cause insulin resistance, and it is just downright painful for them to hear that people have actually improved their blood sugar eating 100% animal products. Their only recourse is to declare, well, yeah, but you just wait and see. Surely your glucose has gone down for now, but in time it's going to come roaring back with a vengeance. But, of course, experience does not teach us this, nor can vegans explain the fact that vegans and vegetarians can and do get severe diabetes without eating a trace of meat. You may ask, could not a total fast work as well or better than a carnivore day? The answer is that yes, a total fast or a coffee fast or a beef broth fast could absolutely do the job wonderfully. But most newbies in the diabetic world are probably just not ready for total fasts, and the kinder, gentler approach of a carnivore day is easier for them to take and probably gives them most of the results of a total fast. Some people worry that a carnivore diet is not going to provide the nutrition necessary to maintain health. And I would have said that myself a while back, but many are eating carnivore and they're finding their health, rather than getting worse, has actually improved significantly. Way back in the 1920s, a researcher named Stephenson lived among the Inuit people who appeared quite healthy despite living almost exclusively on a diet of meat, caribou, fish, seals, and whale meat. Sometimes they even ate raw fish. They did not get scurvy, they were not weak and anemic, and it, it appeared that their all-meat diet was serving them well. And when Stephenson reported his findings, he ran into a lot of skepticism and downright ridicule. So, he decided to make an experiment out of himself. He volunteered to eat like the Inuit people did for a full year and have his health regularly tested. At first, he ate lean meat, but this did not agree with him and he was miserable. After a few weeks of this, he started eating more like the Inuit people did, eating lots of fatty meat, and his problems ended. There were even paid observers who followed him around to make sure he did not cheat on his diet and eat a few vegetables. And at the end of his year of eating pure meat, Stephenson was healthy, fit, lean, and even his cholesterol score had not risen. Now, maybe you could say Stephenson did not answer the question of how a lifetime of this kind of eating affects us, but he surely demonstrated you can go a pretty long period of time and stay healthy living on fatty meats as long as you're avoiding carbs. Now, I do not personally follow a carnivore diet, but I do employ carnivore meals and occasionally more than one. Rather than carnivore days, I simply don't eat anything for those days, meat or otherwise. I essentially fast except for coffee. I have two reasons for not eating meat exclusively. Why do I still eat vegetables? Well, first, I'm able to maintain a very good A1C with eating both meat and low-carb veggies. I've never been eager to sacrifice any food or group of foods that I don't need to. 
I'll give up whatever I have to to keep my glucose close to normal, but I am no martyr and have no desire to make unnecessary sacrifices. And second, I do have a theological reason for eating plants as well as meat. Plants made up the original diet God gave to mankind in the Garden of Eden. It was only later that meat was added to the menu. And yeah, I know people will rant about anti-nutrients and phosphates in plants, and they'll give various reasons why eating plants is deadly and dangerous, but I've never bought those arguments. Eating plants is perfectly natural, and eating meat and animal products is also natural. This is what people have been doing since recorded history. But I found by experience that certain plants just don't work for me. Potatoes may be a perfectly natural food, as is brown rice, but my glucose meter tells me I do not tolerate those foods at all well. So even though potatoes and rice have been given to us by God and they can work beautifully for young, fit people with perfect metabolic health, they don't work for me, nor do any other starchy plants. And it would be stupid for me to insist on my rights to eat food that may be perfectly legitimate for some, but would prove quite destructive and harmful for me. Life is too short for me to play games with potatoes or try to find a way for me to eat something that is proven to be my enemy. Cook them, cool them, refrigerate them, reheat them, eat tiny portions of them, drink apple cider vinegar before eating them, etc., etc. <laughs> well, it's just a whole lot simpler for me to avoid them altogether. By having carnivore meals and doing 36-hour fasts from time to time, I slash the number of glucose spikes and insulin surges that I experience, and believe me, that's the name of the game when it comes to beating diabetes. If you can reduce your glucose spikes and insulin surges by one-third, you will benefit tremendously, and your A1C will sooner or later reflect that. If you can reduce those spikes and surges by two-thirds, better still. And the more you employ carnivore days and carnivore meals, the more quickly you will return from the land of diabetes and cross that border and move back into the land of normal blood sugar. Carnivore is one of your tools, and it is one of your major tools in your toolbox to beat diabetes. No carpenter would ever go out to build a frame for a new house without his hammer or nail gun. Trying to build a house frame with some boards and some Elmer's glue <laughs> just wouldn't work. Elmer's glue is not going to hold boards together. It's the wrong tool. But a hammer and some nails will do the job nicely. And so it is with carnivore meals and carnivore days when it comes to beating diabetes. They are a powerful tool to viciously attack your enemy and bring your glucose levels under control. So when you go out to slay your enemy, don't leave your hammer at home. Using things like bulletproof coffee, chaffles, hamburger patties, eggs, cheese, and heavy whipping cream, you go out and slay your Goliath. You just might find he's not nearly as tough as you thought he was. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.